Welcome to Channel AMEC, your insight to the Australian visa system. Good day everyone, my name is Carl Young, your online YouTube visa consultant. Are you interested about migrating to Australia? Why don't you consider to subscribe to our channel and turn on the little bell on the site? So once we have all the updates and news, you'll be the first one getting all the updates. All right, uh, now this video, I would like to discuss how a dentist uh, could actually migrate to Australia, which is one of the hardest occupation and has been all around years and years being asked and inquire. Now the reason is it's actually very, very hard and it's extremely hard. Now I'm gonna take you a pathway and look through through this video how hard a dentist could actually migrate into Australia. So let's jump into the first page. Now that will be the obviously uh, the immigration, home fairs, skill occupation list page. Now I've done a search already. If you're not familiar with this page, uh, just Google uh, skill occupation list, home affairs, you should be able to find this. Now, the beauty of this page is that it lists out every single occupation and how it could actually, how it will access to different type of visas and the required assessment is uh, there to be listed up there. So what I've done is in the in the search engine, I basically type in uh, dentist. Now that will obviously come out with a dentist with ENS code number uh, 252 uh, 312. Now, uh, as you can see, it's actually it could only access to very limited numbers of visas. It's 407, 489, 482, 187, 494, 491. It's missing out uh, the traditional most current ask, uh, 186, uh, 189, and 190. That means it doesn't provide you a pathway uh, for a direct permanent residency. That's the uh, tough part now, but the, the beauty of it, it's, um, you only require if you want to get permanent residency as a dentist in Australia visa wise you have to be in regional Australia now the reason uh, of this is the past history that the numbers of uh, Australian dentist practitioners uh, they just don't like to have any competition so the Australian Dental Council uh, had a lobby to uh, the immigration of Australia saying look uh, we have good jobs, we're making good money. Please do not let any other overseas uh, dentists to be flooded into the city. If they want to come to Australia, no problem, go to regional Australia because they just don't like to live there. <laughs> anyway, that's the sad part, but that's the fact. And we will have to follow that. As you can see here, it, the list here is ROL, that stands for Regional Occupation List. So uh, basically, Manta, uh, if you want to, uh, if you're a dentist already overseas, not in Australia, and you're seeking to actually come to Australia to make a living and stay permanently in Australia, that's where you need to go. Now, the access access authority is ADC. Now, I'm gonna take you to that page there. So uh, the page is actually. Okay, let me probably just okay that that that's better size. Okay, uh, Australian Dental Council. Now that's the places that you require to go to get uh, registration and skill assess. So it does provide you assessments and uh, different type of um, things that's required for uh, practices of dentists or dental related professions so there are a couple of things that we will be looking at today in this video that will be the first is obviously uh, you you wanted to go to a skill assessment which is right on top of me if you can see here skill assessment okay maybe a cursor go around okay and also uh, sometimes uh, if you your qualification was not um, done in the accredited countries, which I'm going to show you later, uh, then you will re require to go through a, uh, th uh, the assessment of, as a practitioner. And that, now, that is extremely hard. Um, so once you pass it, you still require to go to regional Australia in order to actually migrate to Australia. Anyway, let's, uh, let's have a look. Okay, <laughs> that's, a hard, that's a hard thing. So now, you see here, that's the next page from 
when you when we click on dental practitioner assessment so they are two parts and require is that uh, uh, it gets you a registration uh, to practice as a professional in uh, dentist in Australia and also gets you to migrate to Australia now um, you see here as a dental practitioners assessment registration there are three assessment required to do now this this is crazy i mean if you're already a dentist unless uh the current situation of where you reside is extremely bad otherwise um no one well f to be honest i've seen a lot i've met a lot of dentists they, they all they all having good lives unless that life has been threatened for some sort of you know things that they cannot afford to be and they are family they want to get out of it uh, otherwise you look at this you need to go through three assessment examinations. Now that 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 to me is crazy. If I if I'm a dentist, I won't do it. But uh, see, that's what you need to do. Okay, so initial assessment. So it's a paper-based qualification and document assessment, and then another written examination. So a multiple choice of question examination of knowledge of clinical application and knowledge, and then the final one is a practical examination. A two-day stimulation based examination assessing your technical and clinical skills oh wow now now they don't talk about the get the the cost yet i'm going to show you very soon so and there's all the, also other ones i'm not going to go through detail here uh you can be a therapist or dental therapist or uh, prothodontist um and then after that's done then you move on to skill assessment so um let's jump into the skill assessment first now there are some accredited exempt countries uh, who doesn't require to go through the examination assessment. So that's that's. Let me have a read and show you what it is. So overview: The Australian Dental Council (ADC) has been authorized by the Australian Department of Home Affairs as a setting authority for overseas trained dentists. Okay, that's good. Uh, who intend to migrate to Australia? Overseas trained dentists. Uh, who intend to migrate to Australia should contact Australian Department of Home Affairs to find out if a skill assessment will be required in their uh, visa application. Now, that's uh, that that sentence there is <laughs> is redundant. Of course, you need it. Uh, why would they require the contact if they already got into contact or went into Home Affairs uh, web page? They would have found out to come to ADC. So <laughs> I don't know why they put that sentence there. So move on. If so, assessment is undertaken through assessment of professional document and work experiences. I'm pretty sure. Now, who should apply for the assessment? So let's have a look. Okay, now you may apply for skill assessment if you complete a general pra uh, dental qualification in the United Kingdom, Ireland, and New Zealand. Wow. What about other countries in Asia or what about US? It's weird that they don't have U.S. in there. Um, all right, number two, you have completed general uh, dental qualification in Canada. Right, what about USA? Hmm. And after March of 2010, so uh, they probably they found out the Australian Dental Council know they are just too many um, U.S. dentists. They don't want them to come. Don't know why there's no U.S. Okay, uh, and, y and number three, you are an overseas resident and have completed a general dental qualification in Australia. So that means you are an international student and who had um, come to Australia, studied the dentistry and for several years and you graduated. So that's 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 that may be your considerations. Um, and number four, you are an overseas qualified dentist applying for a specific visa scheme. Now, basically, a specific visa scheme means uh, those uh, visas under o uh, ROL that we just saw, so regional visas. Okay, now, so that, that basically meant um, e everyone if you're a dentist. Now, so, so uh, if you're a, a U.S. citizen who is a dentist, now, unfortunately, you will be placed on the number four. That means in number four, uh, you need to go through a lot of assessment examinations that we, we, we're going to show you soon. Okay, and you're required to go skill assessment as part of visa application. That's you know, that's redundant word sentence as well. Uh, and the process, the skill assessment process generally involve assessment certified document. That's pretty sure in some cases, um, usually related uh, to visa schemes. Overseas trained dentists may be required to complete a full 
ADC assessment process. So what is that? That is the assessment that we have just show you. Okay. Now, if you have completed general dental uh, qualification in UK, Ireland, New Zealand, Australia, and Canada, as indicated above, you will need to download and complete the form. Now, I'm going to go through the form with you uh, together. So uh, you, as you can see, the requirement, things like that. Um, so let's go into the form first and then we'll come back to see the actual assessment okay now the form <clears throat> okay uh let me magnify that a little bit so you can see that clear uh it's quite general um there is no complication to the form uh you need to put your photograph your beautiful photograph up there uh, putting your id names date of birth sex um and your preferred name uh, uh your address phone number emails and then uh, here authority to act do you have any uh, agents or lawyers uh, uh, or authorized recipient helping you uh, if you do you need to tick yes and then you choose your occupations that is going to be a dentist or a dentist dental hygienist or whichever that you are uh, looking towards to become anyway uh, and the skill assessment so it's asking uh, are you only just after the registration or skill assessment or the two together um a general practice i'll, I'll take the the, the last one because why not you know just you know get two okay <clears throat> you gotta pay for it anyway and the title of the dental qualification so uh, now this part you're required obviously all the dentists if you ha have gone through your courses you know what they what they call and the university colleges that uh, you study with uh address of your uni and how many years a month and all the details that you require total theory hours uh, total clinical hours you need to put that in total self-directed learning hours i'm not too sure what that meant but that basically will uh, show how much knowledge that you might have uh, bear in mind this is only for uh, people who have studied the dentistry in UK, Ireland, New Zealand, or Canada, not even in United States of America. So uh, if you already studied those ones, you can actually do it here. And and you need to show your practicals and what if you have done all that, give a take and all these skills if you're choosing that um, occupation there. Uh, section registration, uh, do you sit and pass national registration requirement again registration so you know, that's pretty obvious a lot of these um dentists will have that if yes you need to you know put all that detail in there uh and a uh, letter of good standing the adc require additional letter of a certificate of good standing from registration license authority or applicant who most uh, recently registered with so you need to contact uh, whichever the authority of registration that country that you're in and, and get them to uh, request a letter or certificate of good standing it means you haven't done any uh, wrongdoing you uh, you know you're during your practices there's no complaint or major uh, you know accident and things like that you you're a good dentist that's what they're trying to confirm uh, the employment history you might put that all in you whether you have employed by uh, any um, clinics or you are self-employed you need to put that in professional reference you need to get two people and then you sign and you pay okay you pay for that and the last bit is make sure you have provide all the supporting documents that you have uh, completed and set done in this form now let's come back and and talk about the assessment so let, let's roll back a little bit the, the hard part to become a dentist or uh, a dentist to actually migrate to Australia is that they only recognize either you have studied in Australia UK Ireland New Zealand and Canada anywhere else that you have gained your qualification with you're required to go through what they call the assessment or examination and there are three parts now and that's why it's extremely hard uh, if you have been satisfied with your current career life where you are uh, and you you haven't you did not complete your qualification in um, prax in those countries that we have mentioned you probably won't pick Australia to migrate with it because you, you might require to uh, relocate relocate yourself from a suburban area into regional Australia 
so um that's that's the choice there now let's jump into the nitty-gritty of the heart part the heart part is here now the dental assessment okay overview now it actually assess your knowledge judgment uh, clinical skill and professional competence and obviously trained dentists seeking eligible to apply for registration in dental board australia dba and whose qualification are not otherwise approved a registration so the australian dental council uh, there's a confusion there for all the medical field there is also always a board uh, for all the medical professions and then there is a council for example in nursing as well they, they do that so the registration and the council uh, does the different things registration provide you the registration for in order to actually work and employ and the council does the assessment of your skills I, I personally I think it's it's actually redundant but it's that's how the medical system works in Australia and uh, I've seen so many different type of uh, medical system around different countries and <laughs> they just don't want to change and that's a problem anyway let's move on uh, the format assessment examination process being approved the purpose of registration in Australia so if you want to get a registration and you are overseas practice uh, dentist you have to get it get this done so as i had mentioned previously uh, there are three steps initial written and practical examinations and it's costly it's really costly so initial assessment it's a paper base as i have mentioned it basically assess your qualification work experience and history good standings and time frame eight weeks and not including time taken to submit any other application uh, uh, documents and that costs six hundred and ten dollars ha gee and then move on once that you pass that you getting into the second stage which is the written examinations uh and that <laughs> um basically again it's a multiple choice knowledge of science practice the dentistry and clinical judgment and reasoning skills relevant to dental practice in australia uh, example is held over two days. Do you need to sit this examination for two days? I, I wonder how many multiple choices questions are in this examination alone. Gosh. Okay, and they are multiple locations in Australia overseas. And candidates are eligible to sit a written examination if they are valid. If they hold a valid initial assessment, so you need to pass the first initial assessments, and then approximately five months. Oh, gee. That's that's why that's how hard it is. Uh, if you, if you're a dentist, you, you want to migrate to Australia. Now, personally, I haven't done one because after seeing this, I, of course, I'm not gonna promote one. But if, if there's one, per, oh, I've done one actually, but he's from New Zealand anyway, so he, he doesn't require to go through all this. But anyway, I've got a lot of de dental friend in in Australia, and they're protecting their their employment's quite good. Uh, and the cost of this examination is two grand, two thousand dollars. Now, once you pass this, okay, so that's five months plus eight weeks, and that's seven months already <laughs> going through this. And the final practical examination. Let's, let's read the detail here. Okay, the practical examination is the platform for the candidate to demonstrate that they have professional competence and performed safely in the role of as a dentist in Australia and assess the candidate across professional competencies uh, of a newly qualified dentist. The examination is held over two days, so two days again, and consider the technical skills day uh, and the clinical skills day. Uh, the examination is held at ADC Examination Centre in Melbourne, so you can go to Melbourne. Uh, so if, you, if you're overseas now and you're gonna take the examination, you have to travel and fly to Melbourne. That's all before you can you'll be eligible to actually apply for any visa. Okay? A candidate are eligible to sit a practical examination within three years of the successful completion of written examinations. Oh wow. So once you complete the seven month of initial and the what what is it? Uh, written. And then you got three years to contact ADC and go, right, I'm ready. I'm in Melbourne now. Let's get it done. <laughs> Two days. As a final step of the assessment process, candidates are eligible to apply for registration with DBA uh, upon successful completion of uh, practical examination. So you get that registration to actually uh, practice as a dentist in Australia. Uh, approximately, 
six to nine month. Oh. So let's count that. So nine month plus the seven month that we just talked about. That's 16 months. That's a, almost a, a year and a half to actually go through all this assessment. And that last one costs you $4,500. Wow. Have a look. That's why a dentist is extremely hard to migrate to Australia. What are your thoughts? Leave a comment right down below. And I'll see you next video. Goodbye.